What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I want to do a video talking about how to tell the difference between a sun glow and an albino boa constrictor. So this may seem like a really simple video topic and something that seems like common knowledge because it kind of is simple, but it's something that for new keepers out there, it can be really difficult to tell the difference on a really nice albino versus just kind of a duller looking sun glow. So I want to show you guys, this is a pretty decent example of a sun glow boa constrictor or sun glow boa imperator. Uh, this one has, you know, some nice pinks that are coming in on her sides and she also has these reduced patterns on her back. And we're going to get into all this stuff as we go into this video, but there are just some simple kind of key things that most people think this is, this is what makes a sun glow. So first, let's talk about what a sun glow is. A sun glow is an albino hypo boa constrictor. So it's the albino boa constrictor with the mix of hypomelanism into it. And that hypo gene, I think it's important to understand what that does first. Essentially what it's doing is it's taking out all the reds. I'm sorry, digging out all the blacks. So all the dark pigment, for the most part, you'll see varying degrees of hypomelanism in boas, but for the most part, it's taking out all of the darker pigments and leaving in the reds. So the bow is going to be very saturated. And this is what kind of makes it difficult when you go into an albino is we're, we're kind of programmed to think, okay, reds, blacks, yellows, browns. But once you take out albino, which albin albinism takes out all the blacks as well. So for the most part, you need to look at the other traits, but there's still some key things that you can look at that really help bring about whether this is an albino or a sun glow boa. So the first thing that you're going to look at are going to be, is there a reduction in saddles? So a normal boa constrictor is going to have, not albino, it's going to have its classic pattern, and these are what we refer to as saddles, as each one of these markings across the back, and does it have a reduction in those? Are they smaller than usual? Are they connected? So hypomelanism is also a pattern reduction, as I mentioned, in addition to a color changer, is it will generally clean up the boa, make it a little bit less busy, and then also reduce these saddle counts over here. Not reduce the number of them, which it can do, but it will reduce the size of them, so they won't connect as much. They won't be as big and blocky, and we will look at an albino towards the end of this video, just so you can compare. What I wanted to do is start off with the sun glow first, so when I showed you the albino, it was very apparent. So, the other thing that it'll do, and this is to me, when you have, when it's really difficult to tell the difference, is you need to look at the tail. So the tail on a boa is going to tell, now that whether this is a normal hypo or whatever it is, without the alb albino in it, is the tail on the boa is going to tell the difference. So in a normal albino boa constrictor, specifically you want to look at these upper saddles or these upper tail markings up here, is you're going to see a bluish hue around the, black, up around the, the band of it. And the reason for that is the blue is coming from because it's kind of the albino version of black. So it's a really pretty color. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of take a look at this. But you can see these are more whitish and, uh, and yellows. So you're going to have your orange, your white, and your yellow. On an albino boa constrictor, it's going to be orange, bluish, and yellow. So that's, that's kind of, to me, that is the decision maker. When I'm looking at a snake, specifically albinos, and I'm saying, man, this is a really pretty looking albino, and I've made them in the past. I've looked at my albinos that I've made, and some that people are producing out there, and they're phenomenal. They have the reduced saddle counts, and they're just overall a really pretty snake, and it's kind of difficult to tell sometimes. So when the saddles fail, then you go to the tail. There's some snakes you're going to look at, and it's an immediate distinction. I don't think there's any question in anybody's mind when they saw this video, anybody who's, who's you know, looked at these bows and understands the morph is going to say that this is an albino. It's, it's clearly a sun glow. Now, what I, I wish I had, and this is more apparent in babies, more difficult in babies, is sun glows will generally hold their pattern a little bit more, but the albinos, as they grow, will start to get washed out. Now, that's when it can become a little bit difficult to tell is when you have this lower grade, I don't want to say lower quality because everybody has their different preference in snakes. What I like, you may not like, and what you like, I may not like. So I never want to say that one snake is better looking the, than the other. But in terms of the ideal example, that's kind of what we're talking about here. In the, in the terms of the ideal example, the albino boa is going to 
kind of hold a little bit of pattern, but the sun glow is really going to hold its pattern into adulthood, specifically these orange markings. So what I want to do now is I want to go get an albino boa, and I want to show that and compare it to this one. I'm going to have to put this guy back, because you can see he's pretty active, or this girl, uh, she's pretty active, and I want to put her back, but let's take another good look at this girl here. So, as you can see, you know, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this reduction and this really bow tie pattern. And I do actually want to get another sun glow out so you can see that not all sun glows have this reduced pattern. This one may have a little bit extra into it. I won't get into that just for the sake of confusing people. But that little extra isn't going to make this big of a difference. So, I want to put this guy back, or sorry, this girl back, and I'm going to get another sun glow to give you an example. Then we're going to look at an albino. Or actually, you know what, I want to get an albino and then we'll look at another sun glow so we can kind of compare and contrast as we go. Okay, so we're back. I have an albino girl here and I want to take a close-up look and see if you guys can spot what I'm doing or, or what I just explained. You know, can you see the difference? As you can see, this snake is a little bit more washed out in pattern. It's in, in the camera and the lighting in here is kind of dark. It's, it's going to be difficult to see, but I want to zoom in again. What you're going to notice is this one still has those small kind of bow tie like saddles but they're also all somewhat connected going down the back down their dorsal stripe here so let me see if I can show this girl off a little bit what should be really apparent by now though is that the amount of orange and red in this snake is just not going to be to the same level of a sun glow and that's essentially what the sun glow is doing so it kind of makes sense that this is what's happening let me see if I can get this girl to just show us off a little bit here so hopefully you're picking that up, and I think it is, and then you can see this tail. So where we did see orange, white, and yellow, as I mentioned, as babies, this is this kind of really cool lavenderish blue color all along their adjacent to their red, uh, reddish tail patterns. But you will see that this tail, this pattern itself is a little bit tighter, and overall this snake just has a totally different look to it as an adult. Both of these were really good examples as babies, and they were apparent examples as babies. Like I said, where you're really going to have some problems and some difficulty is when you get into the good examples of both. And this girl is not happy that I'm just moving around and handling her like this, but hopefully you guys will appreciate just kind of showing off and uh, showing you the different snakes here. She's actually uh, ready to breed now, which is kind of surprising. I'll get into that in a new, totally different video, but... Um, a lot of my snakes, they're building follicles and they're ready to go earlier this year. I do think it has something to do with the Cocoa Blocks bedding. I just met a, a somebody who is buying some of the Cocoa Blocks from me. And, and I want to say, you know, I really appreciate you guys watching and checking out these videos. It, um, it, it means a lot and, and it, it kind of, it, it's cool meeting people. So that to me is the most fun part about doing all this is meeting the people that have seen the videos and interacting with them in person. That's fun for me. So I appreciate you guys watching and supporting the videos and all that good stuff. But let's take one more good look at this girl before I go and switch it up for another sun glow. And we'll see again if we can look at the difference. And then what I may do is I'm going to pull out a baby. I don't have any really good example baby albinos, but I do have those one-eyed those those one-eyed bug-eyed boas that I can pull out. And I'll pull out one of those. We'll look at a at a baby example, and that'll really show you how you can see the blues in this tail. So let's take one more good look at this tail here. And uh, you know, again, hopefully you guys can see this. She's all curled up around my finger. But uh, hopefully that works. So let's take one more good look there, and then I'm going to go get a sun glow, and then I'm going to get a baby. So we're back here. I have this sun glow boa. Now, this actually is a sharp albino sun glow, which is different than the cow albinos that we were just looking at. But in terms of visual difference, there really is no visual difference. And that's what makes this so difficult. It's so important to understand the lineage of your snakes, especially if you're dealing with albino lines, is you really don't want to mix the two. Uh, it may seem like a good idea, and I've made that mistake in the past accidentally by mixing the two, but it, it can cause some problems when you're breeding future down the line, future generations of those babies you produce. But what I wanted to show this guy off as is this guy has the smaller reduced patterns, but it also has a connected dorsal stripe around the whole tail and just going down between those saddles. This guy is in shed, so I'm trying to be fairly, diff fairly gentle with him, but let's take a look at these saddles here. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about between the saddles. They're all connected. A lot of hypos will have this broken apart and they won't connect. 
This isn't, it doesn't have anything to do with, with being sharp or anything like that. It's just that uh, the hypos, some hypos will have varying degrees, and that's why I wanted to pick this one as an example. But again, let's take another look at this tail. So that tail, it it's, has no real separation between the orange and the yellow here. As a baby, this one did, and these were all beautiful, amazing looking snakes as babies. So it's it can be deceiving as adults, and that's why I wanna go show you some babies. Unfortunately, I would have done this video all with babies, but uh, I just don't have that many babies to show off, at least with the albinos. This upcoming year, I should have tons of new babies coming out with, with different albinos and moon glows and sun glows. And uh, I mean, check out my website. There's usually, that's how I'm looking. If I'm trying to figure out what a morph is, that's what I do. So I'll go to people's websites, I'll go to these websites that sell snakes, and then I'll look, what does my snake look like compared to those snakes? Then a lot of the times you'll see somebody else post their snakes, and, and at least I will, and I'll say, that is not what it's advertised as, that's just not what it is. Um, so you have to be careful because there's a lot of stuff out there, especially on Morph Market, that's not, it's not what it says it is. It'll say it's an albino, or it's an albino motley, or it's, it's a sun glow, and it's not. So you really need to understand whether you're going to breed or not, if you're going to purchase these snakes, you need to know what you're looking at, what you're purchasing. Before you purchase, the last thing you want to do is feel like you got ripped off because you bought something that, that wasn't what it was. So again, let's take one more close look at this girl here, this guy. He is in shed, so it's a little bit duller of a pattern. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you the, the difference that, you know, a duller looking sun glow. This sun glow is amazing when he sheds, but uh, just the duller looking pattern. This one's also het blood, so it shouldn't make that much of a difference, but the het blood does show through a little bit on the belly. Their bellies can be orange. That's a whole different video topic. So I'm going to put this guy back, and I want to go get a baby albino. We're back with a baby albino. Now, the only ones I have are those ones that have no eyes, and that's okay because I really like these. That I got so many requests for these, I just had to tell people that they just have to wait. I'm going to post them up on my website. Uh, they actually should be going up this weekend. I don't know. This is, I think, September 1st or, or this, the weekend of September 1st. They're going to be going up this weekend. Totally redid the website. So if you've been looking for them and asking for them, make sure you go check out the website. I have all kinds of new stuff going up, including some super cool jungle stuff. So I just figured I'd throw that out there, not as a plug, as an advertisement, because I know I'm going to get questions on this. So I figured if you're looking, go to the website, all the prices, all the information is going to be there. And the new website platform, if I enroll it this weekend, you should be able to just purchase right from there. So let's, um, but feel free to message me all the time. Never, never hesitate to message me if you have questions. But let me just kind of show you the tale on this one. And hopefully it's, it's apparent now that you look at this, I mean, this is a pretty nice looking example as a baby. I, I apologize again for the lighting, but this is that bluish lavender hue, and I really hope the camera is going to pick this up. As you can see, it goes, and I'm creating shadows here, it goes red, blue, and then yellow. And this is, that's really what's going to tell the difference between an albino and a sun glow. To me, that's the telltale sign, and that's the same thing with normals. So when you look at a normal or versus hypo, so I should say a non-albino animal. Normal versus hypo, that's what you're gonna find is, even when you have a questionable animal, and I actually just consulted with somebody today because I got in some animals and they're beautiful snakes, and I'm saying, I just, I needed a second opinion. Is this a hypo or is this just a cool looking jungle? jungle? I just couldn't figure it out myself. I don't wanna sell something to misrepresent it. Um, but you know, I, I actually bought this, bought this guy's litter because I wanted a couple snakes out of it, and I just said, you know, all of them were, were just amazing snakes. So I said, I want them all. So I had to consult with him and figure out which ones were what. But that, that's really going to be the telltale sign. When you go to a non-albino animal, what you're going to notice is there's black rings around it. And it's really, to understand morphs, it's all about just repetition and understanding what each morph does. And there's nothing, I can only, sh I can only explain to you so much. The only way you're going to learn this stuff is if you go out and you either see these snakes in person or you look at multiple examples of it, you know, use these Facebook groups to learn, but ask the right questions. Don't just say, you know, what's the difference between this and this? Say, hey, can I see some examples of your just normal albinos, no other morphs? Can I see some examples of your albino motleys? Don't give me other stuff. Don't give me my, your albino motley jungle. Use these groups to learn 
by asking the right questions. So I guess that the thing is learn to ask the right questions as opposed to just throwing things out there where you're going to get a bunch of random answers. People are going to give you all kinds of just photos because they, they're proud of the stuff they have. They're going to want to show off their snakes. And you need to learn to just figure out, you know, how can I phrase this question so I get the most direct answer. So that's how to use the Facebook groups in my opinion. I digressed a little bit from it. But I see, you know, that's where this question kind of stems from, is I see people asking about these snakes and about these morphs and how to tell the difference, and it's how they're asking. I understand their question, but there's a lot of people out there that are just so eager to answer a question that they just start throwing anything out there. And then you have the other people who are just going to troll the, troll the group, and, you know, you may not know that they're trolling, and it's just going to really confuse you and others. So... Hopefully this video helps. This is why I do these videos. So if you want to see something, I haven't already covered it. Even if I have covered it and it's just a long time ago, maybe you need a little bit more of an answer to the question. Feel free to shoot me a message or shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Uh, emails are fairly inconvenient, to be honest, for me. Uh, I much prefer Facebook messages, comments below, and or... Um, uh, Instagram. So feel free to shoot me a message at all those. Emails are great, but again, I probably get to those last just because I get so many emails every day that it's just hard for me to keep up. So I really do appreciate, again, you guys following and subscribing. I do respond to all your comments. I try to get around to everything. If I miss one, I do apologize. But again, keep subscribing, keep following, and let's keep it moving. Thanks, guys.